Welcome, everybody. Steve with Sense with Fidelium. Coming at you with Sister Mary Josepha of Benedictines of Mary, Queen of the Apostles in Gower, Missouri. You probably have heard of them. That You probably got their CD. And they are expanding. That's why we have her on, just to talk about the order in general and what they need and what their plans are for the future. I even have a video for you, which is going to come from the website. I can't get the play on StreamYard, but you'll, you'll still get the job done nonetheless. So, Sister, welcome. Thank you for coming on. How are you doing? Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about the order for those who may not be up to date with what you guys do. Yes, we are a contemplative community following the rule of St. Benedict um, from the 500s, uh, but we're a new shoot from old roots, so to speak, because our community is only about 25 years old. About um, 20 years, uh, well, we were in, in Pennsylvania, first of all, under the aegis of the Fraternity of St. Peter in Pennsylvania. But then we discerned a more contemplative call and were invited to Missouri by Bishop Finn. We were established as an abbey in 2018. Mother Abbess Cecilia was elected as our first abbess. Um, and at about the same time, we were experiencing so many um, vocations applying to our community that our, we started to lose room in the abbey for them. Um, we were literally dividing cells, um, making temporary cells with boxes in the basement and things like that. So it, the Lord is making it abundantly clear that we had to start a new house. And so in 2019, Mother Abbas sent seven of us on foundation to Ava. So we're in a new diocese. Um, our abbey is in the diocese of Kansas City, St. Joseph. But we are starting off in the diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau. Um, we've been welcomed very uh, graciously by the bishop here and by the people. And we've been living in a temporary monastery, but even the temporary monastery now is starting to get a little bit crowded. We're going to be 12 sisters by Christmas and the Abbey already doesn't have any more room either. So it's either a question of starting another foundation, trying to get another temporary monastery going or building the permanent monastery for this foundation. Um, so the time is of the essence, we need to have a new home soon in order to welcome the young women who keep applying. I'll go ahead and play the video. It's on y'all's website. This is the this is what it's supposed to look like after it's completed, correct? Yes. So you can see it's set right in the Ozark Mountains. It has just beautiful views um, and like it's that. very secluded. Our Lord has called each one of us here. He has spoken to each of our hearts, each of our souls, and said to us, I want you. I want you to live this intimate life with me. We do have a problem in that there's just simply no room. The name of our Abbey is the Abbey of Our Lady of Ephesus. We really try to emulate the life of Our Lady as she lived her final years, after the crucifixion and before her assumption. They have a very special call to pray for priests. Priests are called to help people get to heaven. We're here to keep the fires going at the hearth of the church. There's a new generation that appreciates the way we live and aspires to the ideals that we have. As our community was growing in numbers, we started having to look around for a place to expand. We're out of space. Three and a half years ago, we sent eight pioneering sisters down to Ava, Missouri in the Ozarks. When we first left Gower, we had a very, very small chapel. We like to have a little space available for laity to come to Mass. It's sort of like a big barn and not even very well finished. You'll see the drywall, the cement floor. It's very rustic. It wasn't intended to be a parish. At the growth rate that we are experiencing, I don't think we'll be able to stay more than a couple more years. We have to start building. We can't wait. We just need to start. In building, the Priory and the Church in Ava. We're procuring materials, we're making sure that we got all the contractors ready to go. Hopefully we'll be starting to enclose before winter. Mother said she wanted to build beautiful buildings and beautiful buildings should be built for God. There's a very hectic pace of life. People are very distracted, their schedules are overfull. So there's a need for them to come away. Having a spiritual center, sort of haven, a spiritual oasis, 
in the modern desert. We especially wanted to entrust this new monastic family to St. Joseph because he's the guardian of women who have given themselves to God. We also want to build a shrine for fathers. Is this monastery of St. Joseph? Let's do a shrine of St. Joseph in honor of fathers. Catholics should really reflect and say, okay, we really want the nuns, we need the nuns, so to teach us how to be holy and that they may pray for our families and pray for priests. We wouldn't be able to live this life. We wouldn't be able to give ourselves to God in this way unless people believed in who we are and what we do and support us both financially and spiritually. We are so grateful for our many benefactors. We carry their intentions in our hearts throughout the day to the Divine Office and to Mass. We do pray for you. The fact that they value what we do enough to make that sort of sacrifice entitles them to a part of our life. If our lives are worthy of belief, this hidden life of prayer, then it is worthy of support. It is worthy of growth. It is worthy of expansion. We can only do so with the assistance, with the support, with the help of friends out in the world. I have absolutely no doubt that God will bless abundantly those who support and assist these efforts in building this monastery, this house for His glory, for the Brides of Christ. So outside the obvious, what can the people out there do for you guys? They can pray for us. They can pray for our fidelity and for um, the material needs that we have to expand. Um, and then those who are able, if they can support us financially as well, so that we can stay ahead a little bit of the construction costs. Um, if, if people are not uh, financially capable of helping, they could also just spread the word. Um, mm -hmm. The more people who know and are able to help us um, will, will just help get the job done. I know Mother Teresa would always say, God has plenty of money, <laughs> right? Yeah, you hear all the stories about the infinite Prague stories of just money just showing up or somebody trying to put out a medal, like uh, a Holy Face medal the Amer uh, and things like this, such as that. And all money just show up for the for the uh, funds to do whatever they need to do. They coin the medal or build a building or uh, provide for this and that. So God will provide, of course, but also it's, you know, it's 100 it's St. Augustine said, 100% of us and 100% of God. So we have to help each other out, right? Yes. So it's not just. <laughs> it's nice to that. And the people want it, the people need it, the people see it, the people want it, people got to help out too, right? Yes. And I, I hope our benefactors know that we do bring their intentions, as we were saying on the video, we bring out their intentions to our daily prayer. And they have a remembrance at every chapter meeting, at every meal that we have, we always pray for our benefactors. Um, and that will be as long as the Benedictine order lasts. <laughs> so once you become a Benedictine benefactor, you are assured of many prayers. <laughs> You're in, yeah. It's not like uh, me saying, yeah, I'll pray for you. That's cool and all, but these are hardcore nuns doing that it's they're, they're a little bit higher than me on the uh the answering level i guess <laughs> what are some um and I, it's also a no go I'm ahead sorry. go ahead oh i was going to say uh, another aspect of this building project is a shrine that we are designing um to complement the national shrine for mothers in Lori, missouri we're going to build a national shrine for fathers it seems appropriate at a monastery dedicated to St. Joseph, the foster father of our blessed Lord, that we should have um, a memorial for other fathers, uh, both natural, but also spiritual. Uh, we hope to have a, uh, an altar with a statue of St. Joseph and the Christ child and the names of the fathers on the walls, on the walkway going up. Um, so a, a beautiful way to commemorate uh, a special father in each person's life. And to know again that the nuns will be praying for those fathers. You mentioned the uh, with the video mentioned the a lady uh, the show to come in there. Is there are you guys looking to build kind of like a, a Benedictine communities, uh, not city, but like a little mini town or something? No, not on a or organized level. But there will be neighbors who will be connected to the monastery spiritually. Um, there's something very beautiful about living close to a house of prayer. Uh, we wouldn't organize it, of course, like a city, but just to have the neighbors 
um, around they can benefit spiritually. And we do want to be a presence where people can attend a reverend um, liturgy, at, where they can hear the Vespers or Lauds chanted in choir, where they can attend the traditional Latin mass, uh, especially in this diocese, which is still on a mission level, it's important to have the Holy Mass available to the laity. And in this diocese, especially on the Western side, it's not unfrequent for one priest to have several parishes that he's in charge of because there's so few Catholics and so few priests. Um, and so just since we've arrived, we've had um, the number of laity attend our mass increase exponentially. Um, and on Sundays, we can sometimes have 60 or even 70. I think on one, Holy Day of Obligation, we had a hundred people attend our mass. So you guys aren't cloisters. So if you guys go into say like a, the town level, do people, has the people, if you do, uh, how they treat you, do they go, wow, what are those? Do they think it's Halloween every day? Uh, do they inquire? I, mean, I think some of them do have that um, We are cloistered, but it's a constitutional enclosure so that we are able to go out and run our errands um, as we need to. Um, and I've been surprised, so many people have been very welcoming, um, very, very kind and gracious to us, even though they're not Catholic or even Christian. I do get asked quite frequently if I'm Amish. Um, one person even asked if I was Catholic, <laughs> but um, they don't, so they don't know uh, very much about uh, what it means to be a nun or the religious habit. They're not quite sure uh, what it all involves, uh, but they recognize that it, it means I belong to God. And so they give me special um, uh, special courtesies, I think. Uh, we've had people help us with our groceries out to the car. Um, we've had people hold doors for us or even pay for our groceries when we go into town. And I, I think that our Lord is, is so pleased to see him himself served in that way. When his littlest ones are served, he himself is yeah, so that they might not know what's going on, but they know there's something different about uh, about you. I remember a buddy here. And one person you know said, you yes. might, "Do you know? You know my brother. You may know Father Martin Mary from uh, the Redemptorist. He was in town in Calpin, yes. South Carolina, long ago for Easter with us. Calpin, there's no Catholic. We were the only ones. And he walks into a Seven Eleven in his Redemptorist <laughs> habit, and it, nobody, yes. you could hear a pin drop one, and people going, "What <laughs> are you?" <laughs> yes. yes, we had a, an experience. We had a flat tire, and someone was helping us out the side of. Um, it was actually outside of, I think, not a uh, a Burger King or something like that. So someone comes out of the Burger King drive-through um, to assist these poor nuns, but he says, "It's not every day that you can help women of the Lord." <laughs> <laughs> So how did you become, how did you feel, one, I want to become a nun, and two, I want to become a Benedict? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So everybody's vocation story is extremely unique. Um, I had a sense early on, even, even when I was a child of seven or eight, that um, perhaps God wanted me to be his. But it, at that point in my life, my father was in the military. We were moving around a lot. I never saw religious, so I didn't know how one became a nun or where. Um, and it was only later when um, I went to college at Thomas Aquinas College that I, I met other people who not only wanted to become religious, but they knew where you could. <laughs> so that's where I, I started to um, start to meet other religious communities, visit them. Uh, it was also at Thomas Aquinas College that I became more aware of the contemplative call um, when I was younger, I thought, oh, maybe I, I'll be like the Dominicans and I'll teach, or I'll be like the missionaries of charity, or I'll help people on the street. But at Thomas Aquinas College, I, I learned it was um, to contemplate truth for its own sake. And, and I also realized the importance of the liturgy, um, the importance of having people dedicating their lives to worshiping God, um, being his, his intimates in his own house, keeping him company all day. Um, and these ideas fostered the Benedictine vocation in my heart. Because as a Benedictine, um, our, our life is dedicated to 
preserving the liturgy of the church, sustaining the liturgy of the hours throughout the day. For people that see you may go, you're not as active or out there like an active sense. You're in, you know, you're not out there like yeah. the other groups or things like that. How, what would you tell them back, say, because we would know like you're doing more for where you're doing and being cloistered and praying and more for the world in general than be someone that's active in the not say Martha Mary's, you know, uh, dichotomy on there, but how can you explain to them that you guys are that the the contemplative life nuns in general are basically what keeps as Father said, praying for priests and keeps the world going in the right way, in a sense. Yes. Yes, it's it's important to think of the mystical body as having many members in order to accomplish all that God wishes in this world. And so, yes, we need hands and feet, eyes and ears um, to, for the more external things, but the body wouldn't be alive without the heart or without the lungs, those parts of the body that are very hidden, but still very vital. It was St. Therese who said, in the heart of the church, my mother, I will be love. Um, and I think the contemplative is supposed to fulfill that in a special way because um, her, her life isn't seen, but it somehow brings grace to the rest of the church, just as the heart, say, pumps blood to the rest of the body or lungs breathe for the rest of the body, bringing air um, into the body. Um, another analogy that you can use, though, is uh, that the contemplative is the stay-at-home mother within the church. Again, the stay-at-home mother, she has a, a role that is not seen uh, and probably not appreciated by many people in the world. Um, but I was at Winston Churchill who said the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Yeah. Um, how many families need that mother's presence? Um, so the church, in a way, is a family, too, and it needs... Um, the presence of a mother. And this is something that Our Lady was uh, accomplishing in her the remainder of her early earthly life after the ascension of the Lord. She did not ascend with our Lord after Pentecost, or sorry, after the resurrection, she did not ascend to heaven with our Lord, but she remained with the church. Uh, at the very beginning at Pentecost, she was there as the presence within the community of the believers. And even afterwards, she, um, she, there's tradition that she went to Ephesus with St. John. He built her a house there and she remained on earth praying for the church and receiving the apostles, um, giving them a place of refuge and spiritual refreshment in the midst of their many apostolic labors. And so this is what the Benedictine of Mary seeks to emulate. We want to extend Our Lady's life on earth uh, as a, a being that spiritual presence of, for prayer, uh, providing a place of spiritual refreshment for priests um, and just trying to to be Our Lady still um, in the presence of the church today. Can you give uh, somebody maybe like a typical day in the life uh, at, the con at the convent? Sure. sure. So we, uh, we start a day early before the dawn. We get up and just begin the choral recitation of the Psalms. Um, and this is as St. Benedict described it in his rule, um, we follow the same order of the Psalms that um, he followed in the 500s, which is a, a great privilege um, to sustain the prayer of the church that way. And the, so these first few hours of the day are alternated between the choral recitation of the Psalms and private prayer. Um, so the first three hours or so of the day are spent in that silence and sung prayer. And then we have um, a work time alternated with shorter prayers throughout the day. Uh, the work we, we perform in silence so that we can continue to speak with the Lord in our hearts. Um, and then the, the little hours um, punctuate the day, as it were, little breaths of spiritual refreshment, uh, mid-morning, noon, and mid-afternoon. Uh, Holy Mass is that the high point of the day, we have it um, at 11 a.m. And it's the, the crowning point of the day. Every All the other prayers um, are ordered around that like a crown. Um, we do have, have an hour of recreation where we talk among ourselves as sisters. And, and then we have more time for private prayer and reading 
at, usually at the end of the day. I was just thinking of uh, Father, I've been listening to Father Abernathy's podcast on the Desert Fathers and going, what was she saying? It's, it's a lot what he talks about, the silence, uh, uh, work, praying all day, but you're still thinking and you're doing the ejaculations in your mind, praying to God. The, the was it the, he says the language of, uh, was it, maybe it was a saint that said, maybe Philip Mary, the language of God is silence or something like this. Yes, yes. And so we try to, to keep the silence. There, there are things that we need to say just to get the daily work done, but um, the silence is so important to keep, continue the conversation with our Lord in our hearts. So again, this is the this is a needed thing for the church. The Benedictines, Mary, the Queen of Apostles, they're opening up their second uh, convent. Again, there's the building. You've seen the video we saw before. Go onto the website to help donate if you can. Um, I'm sure there's other things they can do if they can't maybe donate big time money, but maybe uh, materials too. Is that needed as well? Um, I think well, I'm not sure about materials. I know people just, volunteer yeah, just, their time and and yeah. talent. Which, yeah, like uh, people who know how to do carpentry, volunteer carpentry. But I really think that the vital thing is um, spreading the word, just so many people can hear about the project and hopefully. Um, extend some sort of uh, help in financially um, but then also the prayers that's so fundamental i know we're we always say we'll pray for you but we also need the prayers of the laity to accomplish this work uh, one of our sisters said that when she was a little girl she remembered um her pastor had a capital campaign but he asked the children of the parish to start a hail mary campaign and they had millions of hail marys that they pledged and they accomplished the capital campaign very rapidly, probably as a result of the prayers of the children. So I do ask for our friends to keep us in their prayers. That's not bad. Yeah, I think one Hail Mary a day for you guys uh, isn't too hard. Was that like yeah. 45 seconds or something to pull off? That you, we can do that? Yes. Any final thoughts? I appreciate everything you do and thanks for doing it. And obviously it's fantastic news to hear. Everyone hears about the bad news. There's no, there's no end to the bad news people talk about. This is a good thing that you guys are expanding. You're getting enough people to come in to expand, and you're probably need even to even that. You got people on the waiting list probably to join after the expansion. So this is great. Um, any yes. final thoughts to tell people? It's I mean, very good. Yeah. yeah, I think this is like location crisis that we need, right? To have yes, too yes. many to fit into a single house. It's a sign of great hope for the church. Uh, it's it's a sign of a, a very healthy, um, well, the church, let's put it this way, the church is at a very healthy point when it has many people who wish to dedicate their lives entirely to God in the contemplative life. It's it's a sign that um, that the church is is growing and is stable. And we, we know that the bark of Peter will never be sunk. <laughs> we know that our Lord is standing by and guiding her through all the difficult times. And this is one of those signs that he's here, that there are contemplative houses where he is loved and honored as he should be. Yeah, I was just thinking of the three cheers for joy. I mean, every, as much as the bad in the world, there's some joy. You gotta, you gotta expose the joy, yeah. celebrate the joy and help push the joy. But, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sister Mary, thank you for your time. Uh, again, the links will be underneath in the show notes. You know, I'll be posting the, the links along with the video for people to get it out there. I'm sure the YouTube will have the most uh, um, uh, pull for that. I tried posting on social media and got a little bit, but I got a bigger ground on the YouTube channel. So hopefully people will see that. Donate. Uh, they can contact you all on the website, I'm sure. And if you live in, if you live in that area of Missouri, think locally, act locally. Man, you guys better be all over this. <laughs> Thank you so much for this time, Steve. We appreciate everything that you do for the church. Uh, thank you. You guys are doing more for than I am. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for your time again. And oh, tell all the sisters hi for me. And please <laughs> keep us in your prayers. <laughs> I will. <laughs>